We are a go. And why not? Well, one reason could be is I can constantly have cars on idle on the other side of the hedge. But this needs to be done. And these are my Brasavola crosses. I thought I'd get two candidates out that are totally pot bound. Hard as a rock in the pot. Some of the pointers that I look for when it comes to when should I repot in semi-hydro method. So thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. We've looked at several varieties. And now for me, it's time to look at my Brasavola Binosa Wabash Valley. It has also been in this pot two years. Another pointer I look for, how long has it been in the pot? But in this case, two years, and it is also growing out of the pot, which normally in this growing method wouldn't be a problem. But the two years is something that I do have in the back of my head and it's coming out. They are also kind of waterlogged just a little bit, I would say. The water is not receding at all, so it's time. So I appreciate you joining me on this little adventure and see what is inside the pot. What are we going to deal with? How are we going to deal with it? For example, a nice root crawling out that for some reason didn't hydrate, even though the pot was soaked for quite some time. There's a root tip underneath, which we managed to not damage. But again, I'm always cautious at the beginning until I know what's in the pot to understand how aggressive can I be on my cleanup. She is in sheath. There are buds in the sheath. They are chubby. Whether they will grow and bloom after this intervention, I do not know. So I'm just gonna keep squeezing carefully, starting with the top, working my way down. I don't want to aggravate any roots growing at this point because I do not see new root growth, despite the fact that I have roots in the pot and I've just compromised my first new root which was a branching root. So I already know she has a branching root system and that will help me. That will help me in my decision-making process as to how radical can I get. So just carefully, carefully. And the major root issue is right here. It's the hardest around this area, which is a good thing because then I can be a little bit more decision-making, decisive and radical regarding the back and helps me when I shift her back into the pot. There we go. Let's get rid of this because we're going to get a nice shiny new one. Right. Let's see what we've got. One microfiber I can use again. That's great. And I say that's great because I do have microfibers spare, but sometimes they are so inundated with roots that I just take them off and stop picking on them and just get a new one. But this one's okay. This one's not so bad. And what have we got orchid root wise? It's not so bad. The back, of course, is the worst and that's what we're going to clean up. That's great, it'll give me more room inside for later on. And the leka is gonna be quite dirty, so we'll have to take care of that. Yeah, but you can see how the back here, these roots are all dead, and we'll be taking that off and then work with whatever else is there in the front, which is looking 50-50 at this point from what I can see. You've got some new root tips. I would like to definitely conserve those and not break them. So I'm gonna start working my way towards what I want to clean up from the back to the front. Right, and in order to do that, I start by teasing out what I can very carefully. And it does sometimes go one lecker at a time 
and then you kink new roots and then they come off, you know, part of the collateral damage, unfortunately. But with a healthy root system like this, I'm okay. Doesn't mean I like it or I encourage anybody else to be so radical. It just means that there is no problem with regards to how the, is the orchid going to be set back or anything like that. No, absolutely not. On the contrary, we're probably doing her a favor at this stage to not need to be in this environment for another 12 months. And sometimes there is a little bit of collateral damage. What we don't want to do is kink leaves like I've just done. So we're probably going to take that off. But we'll get to that point and I shall be back to show you what my decision process is with regards to that part of the project because I did have a feeling that I might take off some of the ends here, see if I can pot her up somewhat centered and maybe trigger some growth in the back. So I'll see you shortly. Well, I've been at this a good part of 45 minutes now and the beauty of orchids, every case is different. So more idle cars in the background, but I wanted to show you my thought process here and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I have a massive root system that is capable of branching. So I'm going to forgive myself for doing this. Excuse my hands for doing this. Aren't they pretty though? Those pink tip roots. That's so gorgeous. As much as I hate that they're coming off in some cases, it's not like I'm saying, oh, I can forfeit that. I can do without that. It's how the Lekka is so intricately intertwined that actually they are coming off and then snapping as I work with the Lekka. But I have no choice. I have to get in here. Reason being, I want to do a rhizome cut, actually make a division through here. I don't know if that's clearly visible, but there is, I want to get in there and cut her. And I can't do that with that concrete lecker in the way. And some of these roots, they are old and tired but they're still viable. And if I can get a division out with some of these old and tired roots intact, I can pot her up in a smaller pot with Lekka and see if I can't grow her on. So that is what I am working on right now, concentrating on the back part, making sure that I somehow protect a little bit the front part with the roots intact there. So this is my main focus. And then I will pot up two pieces, hopefully, because these roots, they are yellow, but there's nothing wrong with them. There are some dead ones in here, okay. But I would like to save these. That would help this division immensely. So I'll just keep moseying away slowly and I'll be back. Okay. I believe we have reached a point of no return. I just tried to see where I could make a cut and it ripped somewhere all of its own. So we're just going to jet some water in here, see what else comes out and falls out. And let's have a look. Let me show you. Let me get my clippers and let me show you. You see that cut right there? That's where it started to rip while I was trying to see where can I go in. There's an eye there, so I'm gonna try and go in here. Let's do that. I had to peel this root out of the way. It's still viable, but I don't know if it will be after this. So let's see, let me get it down. I need two hands for this. And let's make sure we go where it has already split. 
of its own accord with a little bit of my help, but basically that's where it wants to go. Now there's a root behind that. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to protect. But here we go. That gives me a little bit more access. Let me very carefully try and dislodge this piece. Okay, that's all right. That's going to come off. Okay. Let's see if we can save something that will help us in getting this going. Uh, there is, that root doesn't belong to this piece, but it wouldn't be such a bad thing if I just saved it, you know, instead of going at it like some kind of root Rambo. And you, where do you go? Okay, you belong to this one. My goodness, it's like playing spaghetti alphabet with the kids again. Two hands, let's see. Am I gonna be able to protect you or are you gonna be stubborn? If it's up to me, I would protect each and every one of them. Okay, that one's already broken right there. So that's coming off. And here, here, here. They really like to stick together. This is a great root system. So I'm not too afraid about the consequences of the orchid not being able to cope with what I've just done to it. So this root system gives me a lot, a lot of Good vibes. I'm okay with that. This one is so loose. I guess it can come off. This one is wobbly. It comes off. This one is broken to here. Wobbly. Off. It's a branching so that can come off. Let's get rid of all these little hairs. Tips, tips dead, dead, and wobbly, off, molto dead, then we're going to need the cinnamon again, but we have some good little roots on the back here, so that's okay. Direct Kiko, I'm a bit cross that I kinked this back leaf. I thought I was going to cut it off, but no, I'm going to leave it. But that's okay. That's going to go into some sort of little setup that it's acquainted with. And we'll take care of that. Work with it. How are we doing on the rhizome front? Let's have a look. That looks good. Hakuna Matata. So you go there, and you are just a pot-up situation now, because we are done. And we'll clean this up just a teeny, teeny bit more, because while we're at it, while we're in here, we can. And then I will apply the cinnamon, and we'll see what's in the other pot, just as a reference. Thank you for sticking around if you're still here. Thank you. I'm going to pot her up now. And if you'd like to stay, stay. And then uh, I'll put up a timestamp for when the other one comes out. I've already applied cinnamon here on both cuts. So that should be okay. I don't want to leave her outside of her environment too long because it is a bit breezy here today. So let me do some readjustments and I'll be back. Okay, so thinking on my feet, as you do. <laughs> I've got my support in. Now, before I do anything with Lekka, I want to see how I want to position her because having taken off the back, I could have possibly triggered this eye to start responding. So I hope that's in focus there. 
Let me just see. So there is an eye here that could respond and react. And there's plenty of space in the back for roots to come in. But I have to make sure before I do all the lecker business, if I want her more further back, or she won't even let me put her back because of how the lecker has grown. So she will already be quite centered. Yeah, that'll be her position because of the way the lecker has formed a semicircle around the ball. It's like a crescent. So let me see that I stabilize my support. Watch the orchids that are on the bottom shelf. Don't get dripped on. Even though it is nice and breezy, we don't want to perpetuate any issues with orchids that aren't established. So there we go. Let's get you in first. Because in this case, I can always pull her up afterwards. Let's get these roots out of the way and into the pot as well. And let's keep our fingers crossed, please, that she actually will grow a growth in the back. Otherwise, this is a lot of wasted space right here. And this growth that I was concerned about, because of how the root ball is, I'm not able to bring it in much further than I already have. Unless I cut these roots off in the back, but I've already taken off over a third. 50% of roots have gone. I try to stay with a ratio of one third to two thirds, staying on the orchid. If I'm gonna be radical like this, I always want two thirds to stay on the orchid that are feasible and viable after a cleanup because the size of the orchid needs some roots. I can't just go all ninja on them and say, well, I'm cleaning up. There has to be a sensible ratio. So I'm going to fill her up in the front first and then a little bit in the back to help stabilize, seeing as I don't have yet a third arm. And we'll do it the reverse, back first a little bit and then the front. And I'm going to do a little bit more in the back because it's a big gaping hole before I even start to shake. Watching that new growth. So far, I've managed to save it, do well not breaking it. A piece of ceramic has snuck in. That's not going there. All right, hold on tight. Hold the orchid down on the rhizome. and then push down and shake. See how she's dislodged herself a bit? I can correct that by, hang on a second, let me not block your view. Tapping and pulling just a little bit, not too much, because I don't want these roots to be rising out too high. So I have nothing in the back, hollow shelf, totally hollow in the back, no roots, nothing. I have an eye that I want to encourage with all this, which is still down here. And I need to keep that rhizome just off the wet lecker for now until it completely dries out. And I'll put a little bit more Lekka right here. These have been buried in the past and buried they shall remain. Now, I'm not too concerned about what I've done here, except for the fact she might throw a fit and not bloom for me now. But when I got in there and I saw what I wanted to see and etc., I'm just like, okay, no, now I'm in here. I'm going to take care of this and do it properly. Um, the second piece I'm going to pot up in a smaller pot. But first, let's get to Nanipuakea Dogashima because that it could be another fiddle diddle. Let's lower the support a bit just so that Klutz here doesn't poke her eyes out one day. 
Let's get the wire back on. So my supports are only for the orchid. They are not for the spikes. I mean, if one day I have a problem, I would use them for the spikes. But the intention for me and my supports is always and only to secure the orchid. So I just make little hooks depending on what is needed. And I think, I think we're good with this tension. That's good. All righty. I will be back with Nanipuake or Dogashima. Brassocatlia, Nanipuakea, Dogashima. It's strange how some names I can just pick up and work with really quickly, and then there's other ones I have to look at them. Ah, uh, now the tag comes out. Good stuff. That means we have a release. Yeah, and I can look at the names and I've got them. I can rattle them off. And then there's other names. It's like, it takes me forever and ever. So let's see, this is a gorgeous orchid. I love her to bits. Ah, not as pot bound as Wabash Valley. And that uh, second cut is potted up. And I can only say what I always say, my orchids are not for sale. I will grow that cut on, but if somebody wants it straight away who lives within Europe, let me know and then we discuss the shipping because there have been some surprises that I was not too happy about and that was my rookie error. Oh my goodness, it is time, it is time. So let me just circle back while we look at this horror sight. Whoa, it is uber time. Yeah, that cut, the Wabash Valley is available. It has valid even though they are tired, the roots, the roots are viable and it has an eye that I can see now and I don't know if it's going to react with more now that it's been cut. So that's the cut for the Wabash Valley. I just want to be refunded for shipping and um, I'm going to go about it a different way, but I need to see if anybody's interested before I start doing all that kind of research. But look at this, Woo! this is uber time, overdue, my word, Nina, Nina, look at that. Yeah, this is going to be super cleaned up, I mean like super cleaned up, and she wasn't sick, so I'm in my notes what I'm going to do sick as in I couldn't see any other symptoms apart from she's been in here two years she's bloomed growing well I mean look at all these growths there's new ones coming already so I didn't see any of those symptoms I went by the two year symptoms she's finished blooming and it's time kind of criteria and I'm glad I did because this one would have gone over the edge in another week or two, we would have missed the mark. So I'm going to clean her up and I will be back and show you what we've got left. All right, let's give this a good blast down. Is anybody else, when they see something that needs to be done like, oh my goodness, and you get like, oh no, no, we gotta do this, gotta do this. It's as if the speed you think you're working at makes any difference to the fact that the roots had already died. <laughs> when I saw that and I started um, cleaning up, I was, oh gosh, and then I was working really fast and cutting really fast. And then I thought, what are you doing? It's done, you know? It, it's like nothing you do now is gonna reverse whatever has happened. So you're on it, take your time. So I did. And I was just wondering, is anybody else like that? You think that's because you're going to work faster, it's going to be okay and less traumatic? <laughs> I don't know. Not in this case anyway. So I've gotten easily, easily right into this. And actually, you know what, again, I have to say the timing for me is just perfect because Wabash Valley, that was a bit of work. That really was. I had a lot more on my plate there than I actually thought and considered. 
but uh, yeah. I was just thinking, slow down, good grief, it's done, don't worry about it. Now, I was gonna take off part of her as well. That was my initial plan, because she is quite sizable, and I could divide her, but because she's not got the root system everywhere where I was hoping she would have, I'm not going to divide her. She is staying as is, because the roots that she has are plenty for the size of the orchid, but not if I divide her. Then suddenly a piece would not have enough roots and then we would have problems. So there's no point in doing that with her at this point in time. Uh, just be careful with, I mean, it is the older part, but um, you see, the thing is that she's also branching out. I can see the screen, the sun's gone in. We're gonna be here with a, headlights, mining lamp soon. Um, you see how she's branching out right here? She's going into a Y direction, so I, I can't trim off the back without having a very weak back bit or starting to split her in two. She's actually going in three directions. There's one to the left here, one into the middle there, and one to the right. So that would be counterproductive, to say the least. I could get rid of a fern that's been bugging me. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'm not going to start getting all of a sudden three weak sections. I have one now. It has enough roots to help itself out. And I'm going to check the cross again for this Brassocatlia my nanny Buakea, because I want to know what's in her and if that is part of the reason that, that the cross in her has dumped the roots. It could just be the method. It could be they're old, tired and would have happened anyway, but if it's a cross that has this perpetual cycle of just relieving itself of roots, then I want to know. Either way, it's going into my notes as a similar case of the little fairy. Every two years, it needs a checkup. Every two years. So I'm just gonna blast her down one more time, and then I will pot her up. There's still something in there I don't like. It's still a dead root. But for the purposes of getting oxygen and clean and a good, healthy growing environment into the pot, this is job done. And she's going into a bigger pot as well. And clean the nails while we're at it. Woohoo! Can't be working with 30 hands on camera, can we? There you go, that's how I do it. <laughs> and finally, make sure. Oh, let's raise it up a bit. Make sure everything is obvious and visible. I had a little bit of a few funky bits in here. I did spray her down with hydrogen peroxide. So we've got all that out of the way. There will be no fertilizer for a couple of days, maybe up to a week, depending on how quickly she finishes the reservoir. And she is going right in the back. This is pretty straightforward. I don't know if I actually circled back around regarding that thought I had. I'm so glad the Wabash Valley was first. This one was easy, even though I didn't like what I saw. It was easy in comparison. And I'm glad I had it this way around as opposed to the other way around. All right, before we go any further, All right, and then this time I'm going to hold her, tap and pull up gently. Raise her to a level that I can accept, tolerate, watch, observe. And I'm going to show you something while I'm still finagling with her here in the back. And I think this could be of interest and possible future, oh well, like, Oh, should have known better, but 
here's the orca telling us something else. Watch. This is just a little bit of it. But if that's the case, then I can intervene within one year as opposed to waiting. Because I may have to, because look. You get down and in. It's right against the end of the pot, even though the orchid is at the back. It's against the end of the pot, even though the orchid is at the back and I have all this space here. Because she's going in this direction, this direction, and the opposite there. So she has three directions of growth. And it could be that the side directions are gonna be the ones that are gonna make us have to do this again in one year, which is fine. Because she is, after all, now that I know she's prone to doing what she does with the roots, then I'm quite all right to do this again next year. No support needed. It's not like she's in solid, but she's fine. She's not a tall plant. So I don't need to do a wire wrap around her and she is not in a windy location. So we are done. I'm gonna clean up, I'll be right back. So while I was cleaning up, I thought, hmm, it feels like it's gonna rain anytime soon, but I've been fooled before and it never did rain. And now we've got some little raindrops coming down, which is cool. And uh, then there is Don Balu there. He loves the water. Yes. But anyway, that's not here, not there. As cute as he is, check this out. So with this gorgeous little picture, the candidates we worked with are here to the left. And suddenly Monsieur, the best photo bomb ever. And I wanna thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope that this was of some interest, not too long, not too tedious, but uh, it's time I think to maybe call the repotting a wrap. It's coming late into the season now and I don't have that much time left to get them happy. I think these are gonna be fine. I'm not too concerned about these guys. They're gonna be fine. We got to Nani Puakea in time and this has its own little roots. This one is just going to take off like nothing has happened to it. That's the plan anyway. Thank you very, very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And you can see now in the background there. There we go. That's all my summer bloomers. I'm going to let them have a little bit of a soak. And normally I take everything out of the mask, but this is not going to last long, so they'll be fine and enough wind to boot. And I babble because that is what I do when I get carried away with orchids. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe, everybody. And I'll see you next time, I hope. Bye.